In this video, we will cover how to prepare your workstation for a virtual visit using Zoom for Healthcare. Before your first virtual visit, it's wise to log in and ensure your details in Zoom have been entered correctly. To do this, we will need to log into our PHSA Zoom account through a web browser. Open your web browser and navigate to phsa.zoom.us and click on Sign In to configure your account. Here you will want to log in using the email address attached to your PHSA Zoom account. This is the email that you used when you requested your Zoom account through PHSA. First, in the left-hand menu, we will click on Profile. Here I can see the name associated with my Zoom account. To edit my name, I can click on the edit link in the top right corner. We recommend adding your title in front of your first name to help avoid any confusion for patients when they enter your waiting room. I'll go ahead and type doctor into the first name field in front of my first name. And when done, I'll press save changes. Back in the profile view, we can see our personal meeting ID. Best practice for doctors practicing in private clinics is to invite patients to their virtual visit using the doctor's Zoom personal meeting ID web link. This workflow is recommended to simplify patient scheduling for the MOA and to provide an easier flow between patient visits for doctors. This web link is important as it is what the MOA will use to invite patients to join your waiting room in Zoom for their virtual visit. To view the whole web link, click on Show. This web link is encrypted and password protected and will not change between virtual visits. From here, you can copy the web link and send it to your MOA. After booking an appointment in your clinic's existing scheduling system, the MOA can send this web link to the patient using email or any other alternative clinic communication tool. The patient will click this link to start their visit at their scheduled appointment time. For this recommended workflow to run smoothly, we recommend changing a setting in your Zoom account. In the left-hand menu, click on Settings. This will bring you to the Settings page. Under the In Meeting Basic Settings, scroll down until you find a setting titled Allow Removed Participants to Rejoin. and toggle this setting on. It will turn blue when it is set correctly. This setting will reduce the risk of patients having difficulty joining a virtual visit if they have multiple household members sharing a single Zoom account. Now we'll talk about how to get Zoom running on your computer. To get started with Zoom for Healthcare, it is necessary to download and install the Zoom client software to your computer. While Zoom is based in the United States, Visits conducted using your Zoom for Healthcare license that you receive through the PHSA will ensure your visits are hosted on secure Canadian servers. To download the software, open your internet browser and navigate to phsa.zoom.us. This will open the PHSA portal on the Zoom website. Scroll to the very bottom and click on Download Client. From here, press the download button. This will save the application file to your computer where you can then open it to complete the installation of the Zoom client to your computer. Once you have the Zoom client installed on your computer, open it up and you will come to a screen that looks like this. To get started, sign in. Here you will want to log in using the email address attached to your PHSA Zoom account. This is the email that you used when you requested your Zoom account through PHSA. I will enter my email and password and press sign in. You will be brought to a screen like this. When using the personal meeting ID workflow described earlier in this video, it is important to press the new meeting button and not to use the schedule button, as this new meeting button is tied to your personal meeting ID, which allows patients to join your virtual waiting room in Zoom. To start your ongoing meeting for the day where you will be able to admit patients from the waiting room into a virtual visit, 
press the new meeting button. When entering a meeting, Zoom will ask you to join the audio. This can be done either by joining with computer audio, which is recommended, or by phone call. Note that using your computer audio does require a strong internet connection. To enable your video, click on the Start Video button in the control panel at the bottom left of the screen. It is also important to consider if your work area is well lit for a virtual visit and if your audiovisual equipment is working properly. To check if your audio is working correctly, navigate to the arrow to the right of the mute button at the bottom left corner of your screen, click on it, and select Test Speaker and Microphone from the menu. This will run you through a quick audio test so that you can verify that your speakers and microphone are working correctly. You can mute yourself or stop your video at any time during a virtual visit by using the mute and stop video buttons located at the bottom left corner of your screen. A patient may want to include a family member or caregiver during the virtual visit. If so, be aware of who is in the room with the patient. Establish the level of patient comfort and follow the same principles as with in-person visits. As always, do not leave your connection unattended. For more virtual care resources or to request one-on-one -on -one consultation, please contact the Doctors Technology Office by email at dtoinfo at doctorsofbc.ca. Please let us know if you find these videos helpful or how the DTO can serve you better by clicking the link below and responding to our short survey.